I'm such a big fan of Ghostbusters. Like growing up, that was like my favorite. I, I used to have like a little slime ride carry around with me everywhere. And I, I, it would have been so cool if I was Spangler, but I was Bankman for Halloween whenever I was like 11. <laughs> I, I was obsessed. And, you know, I mean, it's, it's always scary, like getting involved in something that's so much bigger than yourself. But I'm continually, continually honored to see the fans because I'm a fan. Please welcome to the stage, McKenna Grace. Here you go. Thank you. Have a seat. Relax. Okay, I'm here. I have welcome. a red microphone. Yeah. Mine is cool. Oh, Hi. thanks. I'm McKenna. It's a pleasure. Nice to meet you, Michael. Swell to meet you, too. Thanks for coming out and doing this. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you all for having me. <laughs> Once more, give it up. No, oh, thank you, guys. <laughs> so I just have a handful of questions for you, and then the audience will have some questions for you. And like I'm saying, just hang out and relax. You're with friends. Okay, amazing. I'm relaxing. Good. So you got a really early start around the age of five acting. How did that all come about? Um, I... I don't know. I was a really creative kid. I'm still a very creative person. I, I mean, I think, I hope. Um, but I, to be honest, I really, I had this box set of DVDs from my Mima, my great, great grandma, and she loved Shirley Temple. And, P and I also had this massive collection of like all of the Pee Wee Herman seasons. And I loved those. And so I kind of got into acting because I wanted to be like Shirley Temple or like one of the kids who'd bring Pee Wee like tinfoil. If, if you've seen it, you know, <laughs> I don't know. That's what I wanted to do. And then it just like became my life and like my love and my passion. <laughs> Do you remember much about like your first audition your, that, that, you, that you passed and what that feeling was like? I remember my first audition in California, at least my mom and I were like, I'm from Texas. Um, and my mom and I were like, heck yeah, we want to go out to California for an audition. Neither of us have ever been like, that sounds so cool. It's like Malibu Barbie. And so we, um, we went out and luckily somehow I managed to book my first two auditions that I went out for in California. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so easy. You just like sign your name and then you go and work. It's not that easy. It was so hard. But um, then I just never really left L.A. I don't know. <laughs> so you were in, the, you were in that, the dark comedy, I, Tanya. Yes. And uh, that's a, that's, you played a young Tanya Harding. Mm -hmm. uh, did you have much contact with the real Tanya Harding as far as, uh, you know, research? Yeah. I mean, I had, in comparison to Margot, who had months of training and whatnot, I had about five days of pre-production where... I had never stepped foot on ice before. And so I had five days with like an Olympic coach to learn how to ice skate <laughs> like Tanya Harding. <laughs> so I, I did my best and I, you know, I definitely watched a lot of Margot and of Tanya because I'm, I'm playing Tanya, but then I'm also playing Margot's version of Tanya, but then younger and then also myself. So it was like learning from both of them. But, um, yeah, and then I, I saw Tanya afterwards and whatnot. I remember going to see her on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it worked out really well. It's a great film. If you haven't seen it yet, I, Tanya is such, a, it's such an incredible film. <laughs> it's a really lovely film. It Margo's really is. fantastic. And Allison, too. Uh, and, also, and then you were in Handmaiden's Tale. Mm -hmm. So that was a pretty demanding role. Mm -hmm. uh, were you familiar with the books before you did this, or was this... Not the books, but the series. But the series was never <laughs> the series was never something I was allowed to watch <laughs> whenever because you know I mean I was only fourteen whenever I booked the role, but um, whenever I booked the role, I I binged all the seasons and it is if you've seen the show, it's a very heavy show to binge, uh, but I guess it really just got me in the mode to go shoot. <laughs> was was the atmosphere working there seem as dark and dreary as the series? I mean. Hopefully it was a bit lighter I mean, to work on. The thing about shooting something as dark as Handmaid's Tale or something like that is that you can't have like a set environment that's super down and dark or else everybody's just going to be like depressed all the time. <laughs> you know, you got to make sure that your work environment is fun and that people can create and be artistic. And Handmaid's is a really, really lovely set to be on. I mean, we... I started as a wife, which was very funny. And I would have like dinners at the head of the table. And we all had like this running bit going where we'd be the real housewives of Gilead. And so it was just like a really funny, like everybody's just always messing around on there, which I think is very needed and nice for a what series were, like that. What was the audition process for that like? Um, ooh, 
weird just because of the dialogue. Just yeah, because of the dialogue yeah. that I deliver in that show is very dark. And so um, running sides like that with my mom is weird. <laughs> I got to say. But you did it. I did it. Great. <laughs> Somehow. And let's just zoom on over to uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife. Were you nervous about getting involved in a large film franchise? And can you tell us anything about the sequel, Frozen Empire? I can say nothing about the sequel, except I just finished um, reshoots last night at midnight. Good going. I finished reshoots at midnight um, <laughs> last night in Atlanta. And then I, I went to bed at 2 because I had to get all the wig glue out of my hair. And then I got up at 4. And went to the airport and flew here, and now I'm here. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm still going on like three hours of sleep, so forgive me. So as far as afterlife goes, I mean, that seems, it's such a great story it's into such, that. It's such a fantastic movie. I love it so much. I'm such a big fan of Ghostbusters. Like, growing up, that was like my favorite. I, I used to have like a little slime ride carry around with me everywhere, and I, I... It would have been so cool if I was Spangler, but I was Bankman for Halloween whenever I was like 11. <laughs> I, I was obsessed. And, you know, I mean, it's it's always scary, like getting involved in something that's so much bigger than yourself. But I'm continually, continually honored to see the fans because I'm a fan to be a part of the Ghostbusters family because it's such a massive, massive family and something I'll never I'll never get used to how like amazing it is, is that every city you go to, there's Ghostbusters clubs, which I'm sure a lot of you know, there's always the Ghostbusters clubs and I get all the patches and I have this jacket that I line with all the Ghostbusters clubs that I've met. And it's, I don't know, it's so fantastic. And it's, it's such like a, it's such a beautiful thing to be a part of. I don't know, it's so much bigger than me. So I'm like honored. I don't know, it's weird. <laughs> and it's great. So what was the premiere like? Cause a film this much over the top, was it, a, was it? Was there anything unusual about the premiere of the movie? I mean, the premiere was during COVID. So everything Ooh, was during COVID, which was the worst. But Never mind. my favorite part about screening Ghostbusters was we did, I mean, the, the premiere was something else. It was so special to be able to see like that. But before the premiere, we did a surprise screening at Comic-Con for like a few thousand people. And that was my first taste at getting to see how people react to the film and getting to see how people react to like me as Phoebe, my character, and as a Spangler and getting to see just how invested and emotionally invested everybody is because I am too. I was crying and, and looking around and seeing everybody else crying around me and I was like, what? oh my God, this is insane, you know? Because usually you watch something that you create and you're like, oh, this is so special to see on screen since I like created it, but then getting to see everybody else be that involved and that in it too and getting to bring something back to life that's been so special to so many people and getting to see everybody, all the Ghostbusters fans at Comic-Con experience that as a surprise for the first time was one of my like favorite life experiences. <laughs> wow. So um, I got to ask you, you also, you also have a music career too. Can you tell I us do. a bit about that? Yeah, I mean, my my first single that I ever released was the end credits of Ghostbusters Afterlife, which is crazy. It was a song called Haunted House. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was the end credits to Ghostbusters, which was which was crazy and came about because I messaged Jason Reitman to see if he would be interested in directing my music video or what he thought of the song. And he was like, oh, this is great. I don't have time to direct a music video, though I'd love to, but like, hmm, this is great. You, would you mind if I threw it in the end credits? Uh, that's how stuff would, like that happens. Would I mind? <laughs> what am I, like, what? Yeah, that's like a dream come true. It was crazy. And somehow that's like forever in the end credits. That's I, I awesome. don't even know. It's crazy. Yeah, it's much better than a music video. <laughs> yeah, much better than a music video, I got to say. But I don't know. And since then, I've just been trying to release music. And I've, I've constantly been experimenting with new things. I love music. I love music. <laughs> so do you consider yourself a musician that acts or an actor that does music? An actor that does music. I mean, I've been acting for like 12 and a half years now, you know? So it's... It's my life. <laughs> it is. Would you mind getting some questions from the audience? That would be a nice thing. I would mind, actually. Okay, good. This is not We can <laughs> no, just hang out. Of course. <laughs> right down front, Kyle. This, oh, all right. Go where you want. Sorry. I, don't, I trust Spengler first. Don't take any offense. Yes, this is for you. 
So huh. McKenna, I have a question. Mm -hmm. So um, how did Jason Reitman know you would become the role as Phoebe? When did you get s selected as her, the role? Um, well, I'm going to be so honest. I really did not think I was going to get the role. Like, I really didn't. I, um... You know, I did quite a few auditions, and then after my callback, you know, I didn't, I didn't hear anything for a long time, and I was like, wow, it was just like an honor to be able to audition for something like that, and to possibly have like Jason Reitman or Ivan Reitman see my tape, and I got invited to the chemistry reads, where it would be in person with, um, with Miss Carrie Coon and Logan, who plays podcast, uh, and they had like a little miniature set, and Jason was there, and Ivan was there, and going into the chemistry read, I was like, I'm not going to cry. Like, I'm not going to. This is an audition. Be professional, McKenna. And I cried because I got to meet Ivan and I got to put on the proton pack for my chemistry read. And it was one of the best moments of my life. You know, I never would have imagined getting to put on a real proton pack. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know. I actually was in Atlanta doing reshoots for a film called Annabelle Comes Home. And I was in my hotel room whenever I got, it was like, hey, Jason wants to have like a meeting with you to like talk about the movie and stuff. And I was like, um, yes. And he was like, so like, how bad do you want to be a Ghostbuster? And I was like, <laughs> more than anything, is this guy for real? Like, yeah, more than anything. But I didn't realize he was asking me like, am I prepared to be a part of the franchise and the film? My mom was like, McKenna, are you stupid? He's asking, he's like, give it, you booked it. And then I started crying. <laughs> Sorry, long story. I love oh. Ghostbusters. <laughs> now, you were so great just as Egon's granddaughter and you captured that personality. Did you watch old footage of Harold Ramis to kind of study so you could be his granddaughter's character? Or? Yeah, I did. I did. I also read Violet Ramis's book. Um, and I you know, growing up was such a massive fan of Ghostbusters, so it's not like I was unfamiliar with Egon. Um, but yeah, and I, I talked with Jason and Ivan both a lot, and while I was on set, thank you so much, while I was on set, you know, I had Jason directing me, and then I had Ivan directing me, and then whenever Bill was on set, Bill was like a third director, so it was like I was constantly getting advice and input on what to do, so it was really lovely. Next question down front. Hi. Um, Hi. I love your music, by the way. Thank you. Um, who inspired you most to write music, and would you ever do like live performances? I've done two live shows. I played, um, I played one in L.A. earlier this year, my first one, and then I played a festival over the summer in Florida. I would love to keep playing shows, but right now I'd say one of my biggest musical influences is Lana Del Rey and and Taylor Swift. I know that's like really basic, but I mean, they're so smart. I mean, they're lyrical geniuses. Okay, let's grab it right there. They're all over, Kyle, wherever you want to go. There's a question. They're everywhere. Hi, it's awesome to meet you. Your haircut's um, so pretty. Thank Sorry. you. I was thinking the same thing about yours. And that color but, great um, on you. Thank you. But I'm a really big fan of Young Sheldon, and I was just wondering what your favorite behind the scenes moment from Young Sheldon is. Man, I gotta think. I like, I always get it confused because I hang out with Reagan, who plays Missy. I mean, her and I have known each other since before the show, I think. And so I hang out with her all the time, and I get like my memories of us hanging out confused with being on set. Um, I really loved the last season. Mm. I don't remember what episode it was, but I think I was at like a frat party or something. And that was just a really funny episode to shoot because I had never done anything like that. Um, and I was playing fake drunk. <laughs> I was playing fake drunk and that was just really funny to do around Reagan and Ian who play Missy and Sheldon. And all of us were just having such a good time because I throw up in the friends fountain. Um, and so all of us were just having such a good time, like taking pictures and messing around on set whenever we were doing that episode. <laughs> all right, another one down front. We're here. Hi. Hey, how's it going? Um, so Bill Murray has been notoriously difficult to nail down for any kind of <laughs> Ghostbusters sequel. 
do you know how they got him for not one but two Ghost, further Ghostbusters movies? And there's is there any chance that he may actually come back if there were any future ones? I, if you don't know, I yeah. I cannot say anything, but Bill is hilarious. Like they'll be like, it'll be like the day before shooting, and they'll be like. So we don't, like, know if Bill's coming yet, but he should be here, like, tomorrow. And I'm like, wait, what? He's supposed to start shooting, like, tomorrow morning. And they're like, yeah, I mean, like, he sent us a fax. Like, I think he's driving in from, like, North Carolina. And I'm like, what? He's driving himself in and he, like, is faxing you guys? And then, but then randomly he'll, like, I don't know. He's, he's so funny like that. Like, you never know with Bill, um, but... I don't know. I'm, I'm, I am don't know how we got him to come back for ours, but I mean, it's a miracle, and I was so happy to have him and work with him. He's, he's brilliant. He's freaking hilarious. <laughs> it's is Bill Murray. St- is he still obsessed with karaoke? Because for a while, he was really obsessed with karaoke. Was he? I mean, this is a fun story. On the um, Ghostbusters Afterlife, it was actually Bill's birthday, um, one of the days, and he hired a bagpiper to follow him around set all day and play bagpipes. And everybody was like, why is there a bagpiper here? Like, what's going on? And then there was a cheerleading team who came in at lunch and started cheering. And then he had, like, all of us were just sitting, enjoying our lunch in the tent, talking. And all of a sudden, you just hear really faintly, like, bagpipes. And everybody got quiet and was like, what? And then Bill comes in, and he's just casually getting his lunch in the Ghostbusters suit. And then a bagpiper starts following him around the tent. And everybody's like, what is going on? And then he sets down his lunch. And he starts singing in front of us all. And everybody's like, is this a dream? Like, what's going on? And he stood in front of the entire uh, lunch tent and the entire crew and cast and sang, like, an old Irish song or something like that. And honestly, it was really beautiful. Like, some of us, some of us, well... Some of us, me, were like laughing so hard that like they were crying. And then other of us were so like touched that we were crying. Like it was, it was so, I don't know. It was a really strange and very funny, also moving experience. I don't know. He got everybody in the tent to sing with him to this bagpiper. I don't even know. It was crazy. (laughs) And back there. Hi, McKenna. So Where are you? uh, Right here. Way down the middle. There you (laughs) go. So, since you're such a big fan of Ghostbusters, Mm -hmm. what was it like, what was your first experience meeting Annie Potts when you were on Young Sheldon, and what's it like working with her? I love her. I love her so freaking much. Um, Oh, man, when did I meet her on Young Sheldon? I can't even, I can't even remember, because my first real, her and I never had scenes together, I don't think. I feel like we just kind of met in passing, I'm like, oh my god, that's Annie Potts. Uh, but like we really met on the first Ghostbuster on not the first, but you know, my first Ghostbusters afterlife was our like first real meeting. And I was like, I work with you on young Sheldon, <laughs> you know, like, uh, hi, I kind of know you. Uh, but I mean, since then I've, I've seen her semi like every once in a while, often like on young Sheldon or just in general for Ghostbusters things. And I don't know. She's so cool. She's like, Ugh. I don't know. I love her. I think that she's, like one of the coolest like ladies out there. And question right there. Hi, I just wanted to ask you, number one, what is your favorite lyric you've ever written? Because <laughs> me and my sister really like Haunted House and like all of your music, you know, we listen to it all the time. And also, what is your favorite Taylor Swift album? Folklore. Obviously, yeah. <sighs> like, come on. I'm, but also, I'm like in a reputation vibe right now. I mean, come on. When is she going to release Taylor's version? But um, I don't know. My favorite lyrics are probably unreleased. But um, ones that I have out there. <laughs> this is stupid, but I just liked writing this. It was like. You said you'd love me till the bitter end, and you didn't lie because the end was bitter. I don't know. (laughs) I I liked that. I thought that was fun. (laughs) When you write music, do you do music first or lyrics first? Both, because I work with my producer at the same time, so we just kind of go back and forth, and I write lyrics as he, like, you know, does the things. (laughs) And right down there. 
Hey, McKenna. Hi. So, um, looking at your stuff on IMDb, you've gotten into like everything. You're <laughs> producing, you're writing like stuff for, for movies and stuff like that, writing your music, acting. What gives you the most um, fulfillment? Like, what, what is the thing that, like, when you're done, you're like, I really feel accomplished and I, you know, this is almost like this is what I think I'm going to go to, like, and do that exclusively. I will forever be an actor. You know, like, nothing. There's a Spider-Man Ghostbuster over there. <laughs> Sorry, that oh, that's wow. fantastic. Hey, I love it. But anywho, <laughs> I really love acting. I'll, I mean, there's nothing that makes me happier than being on a film set. I don't know, like, how to explain it, but it's... I don't know. I'll, I'll always love it. And I love creating music and I love writing because it's something that I get to do with my dad. My dad and I write our scripts together. Um, but I, I love being on set and I love acting, especially whenever it gets to be on something as like special as Ghostbusters. Okay, we've got time for about two or three more questions. Kyle, you're coming up the back. What's happening? Ooh. Right there? Right there? Right where? Got it. You stand up. Your question. Well, there you go, buddy. Hey, Alexander. Hi. Hi. Right? Yes. Oh, oh my gosh, it's so good to see you. You too. <laughs> um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite scene in Ghostbusters Afterlife doing? Hmm. My favorite scene in Ghostbusters Afterlife. That's the question, right? Yes. Okay. Um. I. I loved the scene um, where we're going down the elevator to the to Gozer's like uh, shrine. I loved whenever we're going down the elevator because I thought it was so cool. They actually had us in this elevator that was way off the ground, and we had all of our flashlights. And Logan, who plays podcast, and I had learned. Um, Morse code while we were on set. We were always learning random things, and so we'd be like flashing our flashlights and trying to spell things out and while we were going down the elevator you know I got to tell all of my own jokes because I, I did that throughout the film was all the jokes I would tell different ones every single take and whatever ended up in the film was just like Jason's favorite you know <laughs> so I loved getting to go down the elevator I thought it was so cool to be like so far above everything and the temple was so well made and insane a lot of it was made out of styrofoam isn't that weird? I know. Um, but that, that was one of my favorite, like, entire sequences to shoot all inside the temple. Okay. we got two more questions. You're going to be headed back to your table to sign after I this? I am. I'm going to be back at my table after this. Okay. So we'll just two more questions, and then... Uh... Okay. Hi. Um, so... Can you stand up? Hey. Oh, okay. Hi. Hi. Um, so the bad seed was like really dark. How did you get in the character for that one? <laughs> I went really method. <laughs> I played a killer on that one. Um, I don't know. I I really do a lot of Ghostbusters, and I did Paw Patrol. That was really light. You know, like those are probably like my lightest roles that I've gotten to do besides like little things here and there. I really do a lot of dark and dramatic stuff, which is honestly, it's really fun. Like it's really fun to do and to get into character for and to figure out. Um, but I mean, with the bad seed and specifics, I did get to talk to Patty McCormick a lot, which was very cool. And I, um, Rob Lowe was directing it and he was playing my dad in it. And he gave me a copy of the original bad seed book. Uh, that he had marked up and that he had written all sorts of notes in. So I read that. I I did my research more so on the original versus trying to get into, like, the mind of playing, like, a 12-year-old psychopath. <laughs> and final question coming at us. All right. I, I'm a really big Haunting of Hill House fan. Uh, do you have any fun stories from being on the set of Haunting of Hill House? Um... Was it episode five or six that they shot that it looked like one continuous take? I don't remember which episode it was, but they probably did that. We had like three weeks of pre-production just to rehearse that. It was like one big massive dance. Um, 
because the entire episode that was about an hour long was shot in about four takes and about four, um, yeah, and about four takes. So we were doing like 15, 20 minute long scenes where they're going upstairs then because they built the entire uh, Hill House like mansion on a soundstage in a warehouse. They had this two story massive house, which was crazy. Um, but we had so much time to rehearse and I just thought that it was really cool to be able to do the, something like that. I know that it's not like a fun behind the scenes or anything like that, but that was one of my like main memories was getting to go through. It was almost like doing a little like segment of a play at a time because we all had to go and do our things and then we'd sit around for five minutes in the scene and then it'd be like, go, go. And if anybody missed their mark, then we'd have to do it over again. And then they had an elevator because the cameraman had to back up just perfectly. Then it looked like he was floating up and then we had special effects, but then somebody's supposed to be over here, but then you turn around and they're here. So there was so much going on and getting to rehearse that and shoot that was probably one of my favorite parts of that show. We can't thank you enough for coming out and doing thank this. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, McKenna Grace, give it up. Hi. Headed back to her table to sign. Thank you. Thank you very much. Keep it going. One more time. <laughs> thank you for having me. I'm going to go back to my table now, so I'll see some of you. Yep. You didn't have time to ask her a question here. She'll be at her table. Thank you, McKenna. Thank you. And thank you, guys. Great job. One more time. McKenna Grace. So, what are we going to do tonight, Brain? Same thing we do every night, Pinky. Watch fandom spotlight videos and then take over the world. Hey, God, that's great. And maybe we should tell them all to have fun? And follow their fandom. Then bow before my genius.